Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dads. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight. Got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet. Cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad. That's what I do. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Home Dad Chat. If you're watching this, I'm not sitting in our virtual area. I'm actually outside tonight going to enjoy a cigar and some uh, some bourbon while we talk to our uh, guests later tonight. But uh, Danny, how are you been, man? I'm all right. I'm all right, man. How about it, you? I'm good. Is today a special day for you? It, no, not really. Not really. I, mm -hmm. I could have swore I saw something of a happy birthday of some kind. Is that? Yep. It is nope. my birthday. <laughs> okay. You just go 54. play. You gonna play it like that? I get it. Fifty four. Huh? All right. Been a long week, man. Been a long week. I, I hear you, man. So, uh, nothing. Uh, nothing big. Nothing special. Just low key. Yeah, pretty much. I did. Uh, I picked out my birthday present uh, about a year ago. I would say. Yeah. Um, maybe a little longer because it just be, it just came available. Now you're not gonna get this. Is it's not going to really hit your geek as much as it does mine, but there is a uh, uh, a video game, a looter shooter, as we call them, called Destiny, and Destiny Two is out now, and Destiny's been out for God, I don't know, a decade, maybe more. I mean, it's been out for a very long time, and um, one of the most, I would say, iconic weapons uh, is a rocket launcher called Galahorn, right, and it's awesome. It's great. It does good things. You know, it's, it's, it's been around forever. Like, you know, like I said, and it's just fantastic. You want it. So Bungie who puts out destiny got together with Nerf and they made a one-to-one -one scale replica, like three and a half feet long Whoa. of Gallahorn. And it fires Nor Nerf rockets. So nice. Okay. I got that and it's coming sometime in the next four to six weeks. They, you know, they okay. haven't really shipped them yet, but uh, it's, since it's such a niche product, you know, they, um, they sold them basically to destiny players who'd gotten the weapon in game and stuff like that. And, you know, it was, it was, yeah, I'm actually extremely excited about getting it just That's to cool. assemble it, I guess, and hold it and then just say, kid run 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 run, run. <laughs> i was oh. like there's got to be some yeah. video of uh of you actually yeah. using this weapon because that only hurt awesome. for a second man only you know <laughs> so I, I don't know i, I don't think it's going to be anything impressive um if it's easy to get to i will probably put a heavier spring in it just because i feel every nerf gun needs a heavier spring every yes they um, do they need more velocity <laughs> yeah but other than that not doing much not doing okay. much that's a pretty cool present though I, that's a you know I like that. That's awesome. It hits it hits so many, you know, so many nerd spots in yeah. my in my life, right? So um yeah. Very cool. So Yeah, man, I mean, it's uh it's, it's been uh it's been an interesting past week for us. I mean, we went we battled through a little bit of that fun uh covid stuff. Um nothing nothing really serious, so That's everybody's good everybody's better everybody's back to work and school and whatnot so um definitely uh very thankful for uh vaccines that <laughs> kind of keep that uh keep all that down to a minimum so mm -hmm. um yeah is that I mean, your first time getting it yes it is actually um, our entire yeah. house got it all at once and yeah. you know not you know honestly like for taken two and a half years to actually get hit with it um i we felt very fortunate and uh i'm glad that it wasn't anything severe mm -hmm. same same glad very very happy for you i get very uh concerned when somebody gets covid but it is more and more often that it's not going to be a huge deal um yeah kind of like the flu you know or or even less you know it was less like, than, eh, yeah it was even less than that it was more like cold 
Yeah, it was more of like just a head cold. Like, I mean, it had some times where it made you feel tired, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't anything severe. So, um, I mean, we just hung out as a family and, yeah, you know, Corey and I were doing what we could for work and the kids were doing their schoolwork. We had uh, some friends from church drop off their uh, their homework so that they, you know, had their things to work on and stuff. So we all stayed busy and and just rested. So mm -hmm. it, it worked out uh it worked out quite well. And so yeah, we feel very fortunate to, you know, have not had to deal with what a lot of other folks have. So mm -hmm. yeah. to get through it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. And fewer and fewer people I know haven't had it yet. And I think by this time next year, I think it'll be hundred percent. There's just it just travels too fast, you know. Yeah. But at the same time we're better equipped to oh, handle it than when it first came out. So that's definitely, good. Definitely. But like I was saying tonight, you know, we're going to enjoy uh, talking to uh, somebody who really enjoys uh, cigars. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we've we talked to this individual before on the show, but uh, we when we had him on last, uh, we were just talking to him basically about cigars. Um, and tonight mm -hmm. we're going to talk to uh, Sergio about uh, being on the board is that's a, that's a new, new adventure for him in the past year. So I'm excited to, uh, get his take on, you know, how he sees things going, where he wants to see things go. And I know he's got a lot of, a lot of things that he wants to do. So I'm excited to just yeah. see where that goes. He's he's a mover and a shaker, as we used to say. He's definitely somebody that I was very happy to see on the mm -hmm. board. Um, would have given my spot up and still would give my spot up in a minute. The man has so much to give and he's just good at it. You know, he's just, it's just, he's just smooth. And mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see all the things that he, he can help the organization with. And also he has his own things going on, which I hope we get to talk about those. Definitely. Um, you know, he's just, he's just doing the work for sure. So. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, he's got a busy family life on top of all that too. So that's the, mm -hmm. uh, the other part of it that we'll definitely get into. So, but yeah, yep. so we'll have him on here in, uh, in just a few moments and, uh, we'll talk with, uh, more on what Sergio's up to. So we are back. Become a member of the National At Home Dad Network, an organization focused on providing advocacy, community, education, and support. Connecting with households where dad is the primary caregiver of the children. We do this through our webinar and podcast series, mental health support groups, regular online social events, as well as our annual convention. The National At Home Dad Network is a 100% volunteer organization. Without the generous support of its members and the community around it, we would not be able to continue the work that we do. Becoming a member gives you access to past convention speaker presentations, the ability to vote for board members annually, and ensures that the organization's fees and bills are in positive standing. Oh yeah, it should not go unmentioned that there is some cool swag headed your way if you decide to become a member. For only $35 a year, your membership provides you with the exclusive content only we can generate and you'll be supporting an organization that benefits families all around the country and world by advocating for them, offering them community, providing education and guidance, and supporting them to grow in their parenthood journey. And one last thing, if you contribute $500 or more, you will become a lifetime member. Not only will you receive everything already mentioned, but also a certificate recognizing your status and an exclusive National At Home Dad Network Challenge Coin with our trademark logo, Dads Don't Babysit. So, what are you waiting for? Become a member today. Hey, everybody, welcome back. As uh, we were talking earlier, we have Sergio Rosario Diaz on the phone with, or on the call with us tonight. And uh, it's uh, great to have you here, man. Uh, I, I was, I'm bummed that you, uh, you had to move inside, and I'm now the only one. Uh, smoking a cigar but uh definitely glad to have you here 
Hey, I'm super happy to be here talking. It feels like we're family. We're just, you know, continuing many conversations that we have through throughout the whole week. <laughs> uh, but finally, we get to, get to see each other's faces. Um, yeah, I'm currently living in Virginia, Crozet, Virginia. It's in the mountains, central Virginia. Actually, the ski resort, it's 20 minutes from my home. So I live in the other mountain. So uh, it tends to get windy sometimes. And tonight <laughs> was one of those nights. So... I was smoking a cigar and, uh, you know, had to leave it, come down here to my basement to uh, be with you guys because I couldn't do both at the same time as move the setup, everything running. Uh, <laughs> but we're here. <laughs> I get hey, to see you good. enjoying the cigar. It's all good. At least, you know, at least we got good audio so that we can uh, hear you well. And the, and the folks listening in on the podcast also can can hear you and uh it'll just it'll be a good night man i think it's going to be a lot of fun um you so you've been on the uh the board for a little while uh, tell us a little bit about uh um how long you've been on and uh what you and your family have been up to recently so i've been on the board for a year uh, a little bit more than a year um and uh i came in the board with with danny mercer as well uh so <laughs> you know I, it, it was it was a pretty good time um I think uh, one of the reasons that I, you know, I, I always been a part of the organization, but one of those people that's looking at from like from the stands, right? You know, last minute seat and, mm -hmm. and you're taking, you know, a look <laughs> from from the stands. And I and I felt like um, as a Latino man in the U.S., I had to do something to show more representation and, and show my fellow Latinx to to say that it's okay, it's okay to to be brave and step up, and and that was a big decision. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it was scary. It was it was pretty scary, but I think Brog, you were one of those familiar faces. Uh, we've been acquainted for for a couple of years, following yep. each other on social media, uh, and and I think that was one of the reasons. Like you know, Brock is there, and and I remember. <laughs> I I went to Brock for everything. I was like, Brock, you know, <laughs> where's this? Or how can I? And he became that to uh, go to person. And I feel like we all have one, you know, um, when we are new in an organization, we all have that person that kind of brings you that, you know, I would say friendliness and comfort and you, you can rely on them to ask any questions. Um, and that was you, bro. Oh, I appreciate you saying that, man. I mean, honestly, like, I feel like I was drawn to you, uh, like for dad too. And, you know, just everything going on there. Uh, we seem to hit it off really well. And, uh, you know, when I found out you were, you know, stay at home, dad, part of military family, like we just had a lot of common, common things. And, uh, it was more along the lines of like, just trying to like draw you into like, Hey, like this is what's going on. Like there's actually a community out here, like for, <laughs> for what we're doing at home, you know, and uh, you seem very, very interested in that. And then you also, you know, you've been building up your own community, which like when I met you, I didn't even under, like, didn't even know of it. And boy, oh boy, like that is a, it's a, you know, soy super papa is like just exploded, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that was the initial. I think uh, when you talk about Latino fatherhood organizations out there um, or brands, now we're a brand. We move yeah. from being an organization to being a brand. Um, it's pretty much the biggest. Um, and that was, a, that was a beautiful story back in tw 2016. Um, I got the news I was going to become a dad and I started looking for resources in my own language, primary language, which is Spanish. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I moved to Virginia uh, when I was 24. Um, so pretty much, you know, that mature part of your adulthood uh, until now, I, I've been living in the States and uh, I started looking for resources. And I was like, man, there's no resources in Spanish back then. Uh, 2016 seems like yesterday, but I think we <laughs> have, we've seen how technology has advanced since 2016. Mm -hmm. And, um, my wife, she's like, well, do something about it. That's what she told me. And I nice. was like, you gotta love yeah, that, okay. man. The spouse just like, let me just poke you. <laughs> yeah. And it started, we, we got the, you know, we came up with the name and, um, and from there, it was just like, I took a responsibility that you know, life was getting me ready for that responsibility. I, I would, I would not tell you I was ready. Uh, if I told you I was ready, I would be lying. So, it was, uh, you know, baby steps, and then opportunities came because 
when you're underrepresented, uh, there's actually a lot of people looking for for people like me, for that's mm-hmm. like the that's in the in the community, but they don't know where to look. And um, and that's why I I started putting those faces out there, those stories. And then the community took on, uh, I think, a more serious role uh, throughout the years. Uh, We've been blessed to work with Meta, Facebook, uh, Facebook Accelerator class of 2021, 2022. Uh, Multiple campaigns, been on TV, public speaking gigs. uh, And then uh, now we're working with Meta, uh, with WhatsApp. Something big is coming soon. So our community became this focal point for like, you know, companies to ask us like, hey, we want to do, you know, something with Latino dads. We want to see how they think, what they do. And we just became a a spot or a hub for, for those dads to just join our community. Now there's tons of communities out there. So, (laughs) you know, so what we've done in the past, um, I would say two years is focused on quality and focus on really paying attention to those issues that matter and uh, doing a lot more like one-on-one conversations and mentoring. And I feel, I feel a lot better. I feel like I'm serving the community a hundred times better. That's awesome, man. Definitely. And you, I mean, I I gotta say like, there's a, a part of just what you're doing that's, uh, really touched me in a way, especially this year, because um, I've taken on a new job and I really felt this need to um, really get back. At, like I had like started learning Spanish back in high school and I enjoyed it. And like, it's one of those things where it's like, you. I feel like when you start a language, a lot of times, like there are just certain things that just, you know, they stay with you. And especially now, like it's so easy to like have the ability to learn a language and even at 43 like i'm just like i'm gonna start like learning spanish again so i actually got on uh, duolingo and i'm starting to kind of work my way through that because i want to be able to like have a better ability to serve the people that i come into contact with and i feel like i come into contact with a lot of latinx people here in cincinnati and i'm just like I just want to be able to talk to them in their native language and them to feel comfortable talking to you know, somebody else like that. And so, um, yeah, man, it's, I, uh, I have to attribute a lot of that to you. Cause honestly, like I've seen the things that you're doing and, and the importance of just connecting, uh, with, uh, with outside communities outside your own. Yeah. And, and you know what, by 2036, Spanish would be the most spoken language in the world. So right. get on the train it, now. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's good that, you know, you're learning. And I think it's also a way to connect with people and say, hey, like, you know, I might not understand you 100 percent, but I'm I'm here for you and with you yeah. and, and shows a lot of empathy. And and I really like that. You know, I think if we were more empathetic, we we would thrive more as as human mm-hmm. beings. And, and I think that's a way to show empathy. I really like it. Um, and if you need, you know, a, a practice partner, here I am. Uh, you can text me in Spanish from now on. <laughs> we can yeah, start doing yeah. that. <laughs> you you might get some random text from me. Spanglish, from time time. Spanglish, yeah, ah. Spanglish. <laughs> I, I will do my best, man. I, I honestly just want to try to, you know, get as much of the conversational pieces down so that, um, you know, there there at least is some kind of like, hey, like at least he's trying, you know, <laughs> that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And if nothing else, just being able to say hello to someone. Oh yeah. In their own language. And you can tell them immediately, no, that's all I got. That's I'm sorry. I, I that's all I've got right now. All I can say is hello. Um, just that you're reaching out, you know, and I think that's a big part of what I've seen. Um, Sergio, with the the things that you've done that I've seen, you know, Soy Super Papa is amazing, but it's reaching out, right? And your wife said it, there's not a community. Okay, go build it, go make it. And it, it just obviously it was a great step for you and a great step for the Latinx community and that ability to talk to people on that level that they understand. I couldn't do that. I mean, I can, I don't know, I hardly remember any Spanish, you know, and it would just be a completely different environment. And I would just be getting in the way probably of that communication, but your ability to bring people together and build that community. And what I really love, of course, about the National At Home Dad Network is the community. That's what I'm there for. That's, you know, of all the things that we offer, that's what I thrive in. And 
you're still doing it. You come into this community with you already. I mean, you, you've been walking the walk, talking the talk for a long time already, <laughs> and you're adding so much to our community and to the board and also with Latinx dads, also with military spouses, which I think we definitely should mention that as well. Cause your wife, man, I mean, she's impressive and I don't mean that flirty or anything like that, but I've, I've just a few of the things that I've seen, the awards that she's won. It's incredible, you know, and she's able to do that because she's got you there to support, take care of your kid and, all of that that you do at home too. So it's just amazing the stuff that y'all get done. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, this weekend I was in Washington D.C. playing with. Um, I'm also a professional musician, um, playing with a band that I used to play before I met my wife. Played with them for seven years in D.C. And the band leader, who's um, who's him and his wife are my daughter's uh, godparents. Um, they uh he was talking about my wife and he was telling like you know how proud he is of her and he said but he said something like you know sometimes it's tough for women uh especially if they don't have anybody uh, they're pretty much on their own he said from from the time that i come he's about 60 something until now you've seen a lot of progress you've seen a lot of men step up and and he, he said coming from him being an old school person right he said somebody like sergio who has done everything that he has done without, you know, nothing in exchange, just family well-being and prioritizing her career. Uh, and and he's a big part of your success. And I was like, wow, that's that's actually something so nice that people are always looking. Like, you know, it's it's very important to set the example because people are always watching, even though mm -hmm. When you think nobody's watching, there's always somebody watching, keeping an eye on what you're doing, especially like us that we are lead, leading this front. Uh, and, and you know, when I came across um, National at Home, that network, I, um, I said, you know what? I had this brand, this organization, Soy Super Papa, but the network is pretty much like the biggest organization out there. And I was like, you know what? I want to bring all these Latino dads in the U S yes. to join this organization that's been doing things for over 20 years that, you know, has been gathering all types of dads and, you know, pretty much we have grandparents now in the organization. Uh, and yeah. they were, you know, ones where I was in 2016. So um, that's where, where I decided, I was like, you know what? I need to step it up. I need to go from, you know, these stands right there at the end, we, we call it, we call it changing light bulbs because they're close to the, you know, <laughs> what we say yeah. in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it. So, so, um, you know, sitting over there to just making my way down. And, and when I saw the opportunity to run for the board, I was like, I talked to a few people and I was like, you know what? Um, I don't care if I, if I make it, if I get elected, all I want to do is set the example so that when somebody like me who looks like me, um, yes. talks like me, has the idea, they can say, well, this guy did it or this guy just, he, he ran, let me run. And, mm -hmm. and so we could always have that perspective of this Latinx, uh, father in the organization. And, and, you know, thanks to you guys. I, I remember talking to Danny, he was a person that as soon as I met him, he just gave me a big hug and welcomed me. And I was like, man, this just feels right. This is, this is the place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and my thing too, like when, you know, I met you and started, you know, trying to just introduce you to what was going on in the organization, like. I don't know that I ever said this, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I really don't want him to feel like he's like the token Latinx guy, like coming into the organization or anything like that. Like, but I do want is for him to feel like, you know, he feels represented, represented in the group and also can be representative of, you know, the group itself. And I feel like you've really kind of stepped into that, um, especially with the fact that um, you're getting involved now with the. Uh, the JDEI. Is that right? I said that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I always want to say Jedi and I'm like, that's not right. I got to remember to move one of the letters. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, getting involved with that. And I mean, that's something that the organization, like we've strived to uh, make better. Um, it's, it's had, it's, it's had a bumpy road as far as like just trying to be uh, inclusive and welcoming to everybody. 
and just <clears throat> trying to come up with different ways to to do that. And the fact that you know you were willing to to step in and uh, and be a part of that, um, I honestly like um, it, it's such a betterment uh, for the organization. And also at the same time, like um, I don't know, like to me, like it, it's it's truly like um, just a a great um way for people to see that there are all different types of representation uh within the organization because there's mm -hmm. there's quite a few other guys as well that have that have gotten involved in your team and i i kind of wanted to i wanted to give you some time to to talk about like what's going on with jdei and uh what you guys are building there yeah that's a great question i you know last year was a crazy year for me as a board member uh my wife got deployed twice um, yeah. one was a short deployment, uh, and then you had the, the, the conflict in, in Ukraine and she was spearheading that, uh, operation there, uh, first responders, you know, on the scene within 48 hours, they were just there. And, you know, that was a big thing. Um, and I remember like, you know, telling you guys and, and receiving all that love and support. Um, it was, it was, it was kind of hard, but Behind the scenes, you know, I was I got three certifications around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice as well. Um, so I was working, you know, in the background. So I went ahead and got those certifications because it's something I've been involved as a student rep. I had the opportunity to study in the University of Puerto Rico, and then I went and did a couple of years in Marquette University in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Uh, so you know, back then in Marquette University, there weren't that many Latinos. Uh, and on yeah, campus, right? so yeah. so I I got involved in the student committees uh, and etc. and learn how to represent and how to advocate and 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 you know tell the councils how to what what do we need as mm -hmm. uh, as minorities right and uh, and I think you know since then been a uh, couple of years <laughs> been like uh, I don't know. 14, 13 years. So um wow. I've learned how to adapt and and what you know the, all the advancements that a justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee or group or or organization have to have in place, right? This is an ongoing topic that is ever evolving. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. when you talk about justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion, you're talking about everyone in the organization. We are all diverse in our own way and aspect. Um, so that's that's kind of hard, you know, when you come across these topics. But the first thing that um, I, I started to look around is like, what had the committee done before? Because it was called the Welcoming Committee, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it was. And who were the leaders and and what things they have in mind, what kind of ideas they had in mind and, you know, went around asking, um, getting on different phone calls. And, and this year I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, this is the topics that I feel like we need um, as head of the committee. And these are the topics that the organization, I feel like needs a little bit of, um, I would say, a little push, you know, to to go forward and and more education because I feel like exactly what we do is educate leaders, right, board members and um and members, so they can make better decisions. We can make better decisions around everything that have to do with the organization. So, um, started there. Um, it was lots of hours of researching. As a matter of fact, my wife is doing a master's. Um, LLM, which is a law degree or master's, they call it like master's in law. And hers has have to do a lot with like diversity, equity, and inclusion. So she got like a bunch of certifications as well. And I've used the time here in our home office to turn around when she doesn't have her, <laughs> her headphones <laughs> on and ask her a couple of questions. And it was super cool. Uh, I didn't know, but we have access to the uva like libraries and research and and she's doing a lot of research so she's like hey there's this resource where you contact the librarian of the law school and tell her like what topics you're interested on and she sends you all these papers and like she does basically the search for you and yeah. delivers like 
wow. a, a link with like, I don't know, maybe hundreds of pages. So we did that and started reading, started catching up on something that was, you know, around fatherhood, around like organizational development and, and all that. And, you know, it's been a lot of hours. I feel like I am a better prepared person. So I feel like 2023 is the year to put those um, those um, research hours and those plans into, you know, action. So um, we we are looking forward to the great things that are going to happen. And we tap into some great resources, uh, professional resource resources where I try I try to look for resources that are fathers who have the experience of being at home dads as well. Mm -hmm. And I tap into this great resource. Joseph said he's going to be helping us a lot. Uh, he's amazing. And I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Uh, <laughs> he's super excited. And and it turns out that watching me, in, in, you know, in, in become a member of the organization, become a board member, he's like, Sergio, I've been meaning to ask you. I'm so curious. I want to I wanna see how I can help the organization. Like, you know, what do I have to offer? And I was like, oh, that's so great because yeah. I have I have the need for someone like you to come and help us. And, yes. and you know, we, we've been seeing from him in the next couple of months. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I really want to meet him and just hear what he has to say and you know, just, it's really, and I think we should talk a little bit about him. And I think we should talk about when we're going to see him as the board, since we're all board members. Um, because I, I think that's, again, something that maybe the, you know, everyday member who isn't on the board, which feel free to come get on the board, man, um, <laughs> should know about, right. If yeah. You guys are good with it. So for yeah, every year good. we, we have a board retreat and, Basically, it's everyone on the board gets together and we spend a day working on board issues, whatever they might be. It's And there's so much. We did it last year and I thought, wow, I had no idea there was this much stuff going on or stuff we had to talk about, decisions we had to make. And then uh, everybody that's, okay, so there's all of these things that needs to get done. Who's going to do what? Because again, we're volunteers, we're all kind of picking up whatever we can and whatever it might be. And as a good example for you guys, social media, who's going to do social media? Well, it's not going to be me, right? I'm just, no, I, I mean, I will help. I will do what I can until you get somebody that can do the job, right? And that's kind of the experience that I had with it, that everybody got together to learn from each other, to learn more about the organization and its needs, and then to fill those needs or make those decisions. And Sergio, tell us a little bit about Joe, his background, and um, kind of what he's bringing to the table. You know, in, in you know, we don't have to go in in depth on him, but for JDEI and what you yeah. think we're going to get out of it. Yeah. So, so like Brock said, you know, I came into the war, and I'm a Latinx. I'm a community leader, but mm -hmm. I am, um, you know, I've, I've, I'm tapping into the diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice resources, like professional resources, in the last year and a half or two years but joe has been doing this professionally right he's a consultant he consults for different uh nonprofits and uh academic organizations um he works at i can't tell you what campus university now because i don't have it with me but mm -hmm. uh no problem he works at a, uh, with the college community around diversity and he's a consultant so uh joe is you know pretty much the guy to speak with about about justice diversity equity and inclusion and and he's Excellent. a father um very dedicated father he's also a twin and his twin jesse was also a stay-at-home father or is also a stay-at-home father um so i feel like you know they lead by examples and and i just you know i was like oh we have this amazing resource so Let's tap into these resources so I myself can sit down as a board member and and digest this and, and take on the information. I feel like sometimes we just got to take a step back and become, you know, part of the audience and, and get educated. And, and I feel like as a board, we should be tapping more into these resources. So we're going to have them uh, in our board retreat uh, and he's going to be, you know, talking about um, justice, diversity, equity and inclusion, giving us the basics Plus, you know, giving us some pointers so we can improve as an organization. And and I think this is something boards should do every couple of years, because when you have an organization that's, you know, members, membership driven and that's 
members change constantly, right? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. might have a mm -hmm. member that, you know, it's out, but you have my, might have 10 new diverse members and you need to check your, your members every year. And, uh, and I felt like, man, this is something we could be doing every other year or every year. And, um, looking for a person that was, you know, that we don't have to tell them, Hey, Hey, we're a fatherhood organization. This is, you know, he right. already gets that. Yeah. So I felt like it, it, it was the perfect person. A couple of conversations. So we're going to have him as a resource, as an expert. And uh, can't wait to have him there with us and just sit back and listen. And and honestly, I thought about what Brock said earlier. Like, you know, as a Latino person, I I was, you know, I could, I could have said, hey, I volunteer for another committee. But to me all my life since i moved here to to the states um it's been about justice diversity equity and inclusion so it's been something that i've been living every day i also was a uh, a member of a couple of boards as a student representative and i was also a union union rep right and as a union rep in my previous job as a social worker in fairfax county um i used to deal with you know, the Latinx community. So mm -hmm. I was super happy to introduce my community that I know well to to the main, you know, uh, I would say organization and tell them, hey, here's this person that, um, you know, we should tap into the resources for X, Y, C because this person is an expert. They just didn't have enough confidence to come and say, hey, I know a little bit more about this, you know, yeah. and, and I feel like that's where diversity and inclusion come into play because you might never know who's around you that might be the right fit for some of your needs as an organization to be mm -hmm. met. Yeah. I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. And Ginny, I too, is something that, you know, the more you learn about it, the more I think a lot of people realize how they're not inclusive you know the things and little things things you don't even realize you're like oh man i i said this i it's what we've said our whole life you know whatever or the ways that we look at something and, well no it's, this is fine nobody's bothered by this uh you're not bothered by it that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean nobody's bothered by it right yeah because again it's that broadening of your community that reaching out and communicating to people in other communities and making their community a part of your life too to where you understand it's like the more you see of the world, the more you enjoy the world and its diversity, right? So having it, having him come in and speak to the board, I was a hundred percent behind that and still am. And I really think because it should start at the top, you know, if we can learn these things and we can look at things and things that we may be doing every day that we don't realize, and maybe he'll be, well, you should probably not say that word. Maybe you say this instead or whatever exactly. it might be, right? And that way we're adding that. And then once the board can start making that change, I mean, a network this big is like a cruise ship. It's not going to turn on a dime. You know, we're not going to, we're not a speedboat here, but we can make those gradual changes so that we can, I guess the word would be catch up to the changes in the communities around us so that yeah. we can pick up, Oh yeah, well, this is what we should talk. If you're a military spouse, we didn't even think about that. You know, we, we, we never even considered that you might be running into this problem or you might have this resource that you can provide to the rest of the community or whatever it might be. So can't wait to meet. And thank you so much just from me to you. Thanks for, for introducing him us to us and, and getting him to come to the retreat. Thank you. It's, it's a long-term plan. You know, it's, when you when you realize you know i i met the board and i was like wow this board is so progressive forward thinking i was in love with you know every single one of you guys to be honest because um as a as a minority sometimes you get kind of like pushbacks in different organizations they're like oh like like you just said like people at think the ship is going to turn, you know, immediately and it's going to take a different, you know, row, a different uh, course. And um, and it's not like that. It's to be conscious about the first first things, what we say every day, what we do every day, mm -hmm. be conscious, make sure we have representation, make sure that we are uh, using the right vocabulary, that we are using the right images, that we're representing everyone, that we're celebrating, you know, all their holidays that people might celebrate around us um, that we are using the language and that if you have someone with um, with any kind of a, I would say, need, right, you can 
meet their needs. Um, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, I I didn't know like in 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 diversity, right? Uh, it includes people. It includes people with disabilities. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I didn't know that. You know, coming from a Latinx point of view, we always think about ethnicity and race, yes. but there's other needs. And and I was like, oh, this is awesome because I will not be here leading this community just because of the color of my skin or where I'm from. My ethnicity mm -hmm. is because I'm here to serve. And and the plan with that is to have a member that it's, you know, that are leading their front in each of those categories to so we can form and work as a committee. You know, it's yeah. okay. So we're going to work on every single issue and we're going to make sure that we have some, a policy in place to meet these needs. And again, this is just this board, you know, maybe another member will be listening to this in six years from now and <laughs> there will be other needs and they, they will push forward that agenda. And I think that's what we all need. And especially the communication, we need to learn how to communicate our needs and yeah. I think uh, that's what this board is doing just right. I feel like we are not shy about, you know, expressing ourselves and what do we need as board members and what our uh, members need. And and I, I, I'm i just, you know, I'm grateful to be here. And uh, I think this is a great organization for every dad, uh, especially that during the pandemic, the definition of an at-home dad changed. And we went from... Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the percentage, but we went from a low percentage to um, I asked, let me let me give you an example. So I have a Peloton bike. And I'm in this group like Peloton dads, right? It's like, I don't know, 30,000 of them. And I asked who in this group is at at home dad. Mm -hmm. And I got like 5000 comments. And wow. You know, they were like, oh, I'm a full time, um, I'm part time at home dad, or I work at home and I take care of my children at the same time. That's yes. tough. Too. Like, <laughs> That's real tough. Yes. <laughs> it is, but it, it was amazing the diversity yes. within, you know, the definition of at home dad. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh man, this is the future right here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember when like I, uh, I joined the board and uh, they were like, oh yeah, we have a welcoming committee and i'm like like what is that exactly like and they explained what they were trying what they were working on doing and and how they wanted to go about it and i'm like well like i feel like everybody is welcomed in here and you know of course you know they would feel like they should be welcomed in here and it the the question or the statement got turned back towards me it was like well that's great but what are you doing to show it like, what mm -hmm. is it that's, what is it that actually like puts it out there to somebody that actually makes them feel welcome, makes them feel included? And I'm like, oh, uh, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just straight up, I was like, I don't have an answer for that. Um, we, you know, we do our best to, you know, come around anybody that's needs, uh, needs to feel welcomed. I, I, I just couldn't come up with a very good answer about it. And then as time progressed and in this, you know, organization progressed through, you know, just trying to be more inclusive and really get that out there uh, to the public. Uh, I feel like a lot of different uh, dads came out of the, came out of like the corner and was like, I'm so glad that, you know, you're saying this or you're doing that. And I'm just like, wow. Like, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot, but it was enough for them to stand up out of, out of the shadows and be like you're talking to me like thank you for for mm -hmm. talking to me and i was like whoa it's like that whole like i see you type of mentality and um you know to have guys uh come to the convention and say that and to jump on um you know the forums and stuff and just talk about how they feel so much more comfortable um just stepping out and actually talking versus just standing in the back and watching the conversations um, mm -hmm. is huge to what's going on with uh, JDI. That that was the first order of business. We changed the name from the welcoming committee to JDI. So it was like, okay, we want you to know that we're intentional about this. You know, that's, that's the first thing from, from 
making it sound nice because you know welcoming sounds really nice i it's like you know everybody's welcome right. but to say we are taking steps forward and we are into action and and we we are a part of this action and i feel like the organization it's a very welcoming diverse organization i feel welcome in the organization now you always been very transparent all of board members they said well you know the majority of our membership is white okay and that's totally fine we have to also take a look at what's what's happened during the last 20 years you know i went to to milwaukee in 2008 and i think there were like maybe like 20 latino students there uh that yeah. identify as latino and if you go now there's probably hundreds you know I was so say, you were talking about go you're talking about you know going to marquette and everything and being up in milwaukee and just the fact that home dad con this year is in milwaukee like wh yeah <laughs> what what about that excites you and are you uh are you looking to connect with uh with Marquette when you uh when you get there? Man, I one of the things I want to do is just like uh go by where my old dorm was uh yeah. and, and just walk. <laughs> um I have an anecdote from my first uh winter over there. Um I remember it was snowing maybe like I don't know, two feet of snow or yeah, two feet. That's of snow. a dusting up there, I think. Yeah. So so <laughs> I was in my dorm and I didn't go to to class you know, thinking there wouldn't be class. And then I, I get an email from the professor saying like, hey, <laughs> why didn't you show? I was like, oh, I didn't think, you know, we, we had to walk to class. Did like, you get your university issued snowshoes? <laughs> so what I did was I went to a, I think it was a hardware store and I got some, a pair of like of boots, like this, like 10 bucks boots. Like, yeah, like um, what is, what is that material? The construction oh, boots the Gore-Tex or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean cheap eh? you know and I and I had my boots with me put them on and walked in the snow and then when I got to the building left them there put on my shoes and take class because coming from Puerto Rico the Caribbean I never seen that oh, that yeah. much snow oh I yeah, didn't definitely think it was not. possible <laughs> right yeah to right. have class and then like 24 inches of snow but yeah <laughs> someone's shave ice machine has broken and it is out of control right now <laughs> crazy it was crazy yeah especially from puerto rico it's such a, a just a huge climate change but i do want to go back to what you were saying about the probable numbers of latinx that are at that college and that are university across america that it's growing that members of the latinx community are in college you know, where it was something like, you know, I think 15, 20 years ago, it was just kind of like, who? No, there's there's nobody here speaks Spanish. Why would we speak? You want to learn Spanish? We can maybe have a class. Mm -hmm. but there really wasn't anything there offering at all. And the, the problem that we run into, again, communication being key, is if someone can't speak your language, a lot of times you assume they're dumb. You know, they just don't, yeah. they're, they're not smart. And we have people that are, I mean, doctorate level that just don't speak English. That's just, they, they never learned it or they didn't need to. And now that they are learning it, I guarantee their English is way better than my Spanish as an example, you know, <laughs> yeah. but the amount of things that we miss out on in our community because of the people that we're just basically not including mm -hmm. and it's terrible. You know, and, and if go and ahead. that creates an identity problem, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, what happens is when when a lot of immigrants came in, I would say, you know, you have different uh surges of immigration, right? Yeah, you had uh pretty much the Italians in the in the twenties, thirties, mm -hmm. you had the Puerto Ricans in the fifties, and that was in a certain area. You had the Chinese who were brought to construct in the eighteen hundreds the, yeah. the railroads and and all of that. Um in and the had, Germans in the twenties and thirties too. Exactly. Germans, you had pretty I mean pretty much everywhere in the world we had this this nation is built on uh, by immigrants. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. um what happened was these immigrants had such a hard time that uh, they didn't teach the language to the children. So their children look Latino, come from Latino families, but speak English. And you know what yeah. happened with that? They they don't feel like they can fit within Latino community 
or with the regular community in the in their com within their communities, right? So it it's creating an identity problem. Like you know, I look Latinx, but I can't speak. You know, in Sp I can't speak nothing in Spanish. I can understand it, but I can't speak. And then I'm not Spanish enough or Latinx enough or Hispanic enough for the Latinx community or Hispanic community. But I am right. not also white. You know, right. so. And that creates an identity problem. And what we're trying to do here is create a sense of welcoming, of acceptance, of inclusion, of equity, and tell you no matter what you speak or how you speak uh, or how you look or where you come from, we're here for you. And we will move, you know, everything to make you feel welcome in here. And and I think that's the, the first step. And then all, after that, it's realizing that you know, like Danny said, there's so many professionals out there. I think we live in this era of the globalization internet that, you know, we can't rely that all the resources that we have here in the U.S. are the best resources. You know, I've met people who are leaders who have been talking about great things for the past 25 years. And, you know, maybe somebody here in the States, you know, knows how to write a book, used all this research and all this experience, wrote a book, bestseller book, and, you know, uh, selling thousands and millions of books. But when you look at the book and you go back, you're quoting that person uh, in some mm -hmm. other country, you know, who yeah. was the expert on, on the subject matter. So, so I, you know, I really think that we should expand our minds and, and we start, we need to start tapping for the best resources out there in the world, no matter where they come from or how they look like or what language they speak. Yeah. Right? We have an amazing device in our hands all the time, a phone mm -hmm. that, can connect us to anybody in the world and anywhere. And, and it's just amazing. So I think, you know, it's time for us to, to teach ourselves and teach our children that, you know, we all look different and that your best friend can be out there and you just need to tell them, hello, Hey, what's your name? And, yeah, right. you know, and, and it start a relationship from there. And, and honestly, um, I seen that within the military community, um, you know, as a military spouse, we move a lot and, in North Carolina, Fayetteville, majority of the population uh, were African American. So as a Latinx, I I feel like okay, now it's different for me. I have to to join a community that I always how can I say this? I identify as a minority. So, but we are not the same, right? It's you mm -hmm. know we come from different places and the cultures are different. Um, the way we're represented is different. So how can I become, I would say, an ally for the African-American yeah. community? Mm -hmm. Now that I live here in Crozet, Virginia, it's totally different because there's barely African-Americans. I think in my daughter's class, she's the only Latina. Uh, yeah, the only Latina. And, uh, and so it's different. Now I have to take on a role of representing more yeah. the Latinx community because there's less of us here. So you know, I think it's it's part of life. It's part of, you know, year 2023. And yeah, and we have to take advantage of that. I think too, just in the things that you're talking about, the other thing that I keep coming back to as well is just um like how we're tr like the organization is working to diversify um the speakers that are presenting at the convention. Um and how like um I feel like this year was uh, or this past year was just like a huge like breakthrough in a lot of ways just for bringing in a lot of different people but specifically the one person that I feel like felt very much welcomed and like had a place uh, was uh, Jeffrey uh, Bernstein and just him coming in and um, feeling comfortable um, like he I, I just the conversations that I had with him like he was just so like, I don't know if I would have done this like a few years ago, but I feel like you guys have made the strides to, you know, make this a place that I don't have to feel awkward in. And I feel very much um, welcomed and accepted here. And I don't have to really, I don't have to explain myself to anybody and mm -hmm. I can just come and be a dad and, you know, talk about the things that I love and and show off the fact that I have this talent for, you know, learning you know teaching people how to paint nails and all this different stuff and um you know those are the kind of things that i feel like 
as we continue moving forward are going to just peel away like the onion of the organization and show that like, you know, there are places for everybody that thinks that they maybe don't feel comfortable enough coming out and saying like, Hey, like, I don't feel comfortable in this, but if you bring forth certain areas of it and like the convention or on the web webinar or on this podcast or whatever, and they see like, Oh, like they actually do accept dads that are, you know, fit into this, this category, mm -hmm. whatever, like those, those are the things that push an organization forward. And I feel like, um, you know, we're really stepping uh, to make, making step steps forward uh, in a place where I feel like, um, few years back uh we were just sort of spinning our wheels trying to figure out how to do it and now we actually are uh moving the moving things forward and um i'm, I'm really proud that you know it's you know it's moving that way because it it was a very slow roll and uh i feel like we're really starting to make uh make make some marks with that so i'm um, yeah yeah and the commitment is to you know at least my commitment as a board member is to oh the next person that comes after me that we have somebody always in place to look after this, to represent no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, that you're passionate about these issues because they will bring our organization forward. They will make, you know, a giant leap instead of baby steps. And, and I think um, during the past years, including the pandemic, we've seen how organizations have taken the time to address you know, justice, diversity, and inclusion. And I and I, I always talk about, you know, JDI. Somebody asked me, why not the Jedi Council? And I was <laughs> like, because they won't take it seriously. You know, it's no, like yeah. a, a fatherhood organization. And then you're like, you know, I can I can see people like just immediately, you know, making the joke. And and I, you know, I'm we all know you have different wait, but what color lightsaber do you really have, Sergio? Come on, Man, tell us. And <laughs> uh my my favorite has always been the green. Uh, yes. Ju yes. Just, <laughs> just because I feel like the real Jedi's, you know. You, you exactly right, yeah. sir. <laughs> All you wannabes out there, step up. But uh, you know, one of the things is like you know, I could hear that making the joke, you know, immediately, and I feel like I love it. I would be guilty. I would be laughing. Uh, but at this, I'm a, and I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan. I have a Star Wars tattoo on my left arm, like you know. But one of the things that, you know, I was like, we need to be taken seriously and you can't name it the Jedi Council. It, it no. would be super cool. Uh, I don't know if it would be a copyright infringement. Uh, I started thinking about all those things later on because I was like, it would be cool to make a sticker. But probably Disney owns that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah there's no reason to mess with those guys. Yeah. Don't yeah, mess with don't, the mouse. Don't mess with it. the mouse. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, it, it's part of it. And I, and I am I am proud to say that. You know, I have um, co-board members like you who are, you know, always pushing forward the agenda and I can just rely on giving you a call, send you a message and see like, hey, I have this idea or, you know, just plain, honest fathers who are just making a difference and we're all passionate about it. So we like Brock was saying, we should focus on the strengths, on what unites us. And I think that's where the organization is heading and we're always focusing on what unites us and i love that um raga my first post uh on social media uh was about this congressman who's a dad i don't know if you saw it uh but i, I i'm helping out with social media wait is it oh uh, yeah the guy who came, the so congressman that came baby. in with the wore the wore his uh child on him yeah right? uh yeah so so i i even tagged him uh jimmy gomez he's from california and i was like man it would be cool if we can invite jimmy to like you know like home that con maybe i love to get just, jimmy there that would be awesome yeah maybe we should send them a message I, uh yeah I, that should be in our task list uh because there he is he's like carrying his baby everywhere and that's how we were like you know i think right. i would oh, carry yeah. my daughter if i could right now i mm -hmm. i love that face i i was a baby like i had like three or four different like baby wearing like devices oh yeah and uh it was awesome like i i love having my daughter like protecting her and just having yeah. her there it was amazing uh, you know too bad i can't do it now but uh she's six <laughs> but uh you know it, it i saw this guy and i was like man, this guy looks like me. 
and he's a member of Congress and he's passionate about something that I'm passionate. It's like, oh, let's get him in there. Let's 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 show him. And you know, I was surprised. Like, like you know, people were liking the the the, the post and the image, and I was like, you know what? Sometimes people don't focus on justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion because they haven't tried it. They haven't yeah. tried a single thing. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's the, the goal is to be trailblazers within our parameters. We want within what we can, you know, and, uh, and that's something that we will definitely make a difference. Don't, don't think this is, you know, for the audience, don't think that, uh, that this idea is too bad or too small, or it might be too outdated or too innovative. Any idea is good because it will impact someone and definitely. will change their lives. Yeah, definitely. Well, before we let you go, because we've been talking some really serious stuff and it's been an awesome conversation. I, I got to ask you a few fun little uh, questions about, uh, about you and uh just to give everybody a little bit of extra information on you so uh, i want to start with uh you mentioned that you're a star wars fan but what is your like go-to favorite movie i thought about that when i oh my god i thought about that <laughs> so there's a movie that i can't stop watching that every time i watch it's like you know i love it and it's gladiator Oh, that's a good one. It's a classic. It's it's so good, and and I think the older you get, the more you understand like the history, and you know you you get into that like those like you know things that that did happen a certain way, mm -hmm. not you know might not be as as they're portrayed in the movie, but that movie every time I see it, it's like a classic. I I need to at least watch it a couple of times every year. So Gladiator is is one of those classics for me. Definitely, and Gladiator is one of those ones too that like. You know, there's there's some fatherhood in there. There's just some like strong, like just being a, being a, a strong, loving spouse and just all those like different parts to it. And just, you know, trying to, um, I don't know, just like stand up for your family type of situation, especially in a, like such a really bad situation to like, yeah. <laughs> just lay it all out on the line. So, yeah, that is a great movie for sure. Um, you're a musician. Uh, you know, you, you play the Congos and stuff, but when you are uh, in the car by yourself, what's uh, what, what kind of music like do you have like favorite bands or what, what is it that you like to listen to? I listen to a lot of different music being a musician, but something that happens when I'm in the car by myself is that my daughter has this playlist. And sometimes I find myself listening to her music like for half an hour until I notice <laughs> and I'm singing to those songs and I, it, it happens a lot. Uh but my favorite music, I think, is when I'm by myself, I like to listen to a lot of jazz. I think, you know, the improvisation point of view, it's like it gets my head going and, and it's like I'm driving and I get so many ideas. It it helps my brain. Like, I don't know, it's, it accelerates the brain or something. It's just it's food for my brain. Uh, so jazz standards, classic Latin jazz as well. I just get a. A high of that like improvisation here in like you know piano or or horn solo or sax it's just amazing that's awesome and i'm gonna throw a curveball into you here but do you have a favorite uh like game that you like to play as a family oh wow game oh that's uh Wow. We recently got this like games that it's like cars against humanity but it's like a Puerto Rican version, and then it's a there's a kids version that comes like an add on. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we recently enjoyed it since we got a, we had a lot of family visiting. We're like, what can we do to get everybody around the table? Uh, we've been enjoying that. But when I was a kid with my family, I used to play a lot of Scrabble. Okay, and I feel like that helped my vocabulary, yes. like in Spanish. Yes. And I remember my grandma used to kick our butts, like and, <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> And then um, last year I was in Puerto Rico for a month and we sat down one night and played Scrabble for like a couple of hours, you know, and I was like, oh, I was like, grandma, I finally got you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, I think that's games are such a playing such an important role of gathering everybody around the table. Mm -hmm. I, I'm starting to incorporate that with my daughter as she grows Uh a lot more. So I'm um, I'm always looking for something that challenges her and that also will give us, you know, an hour, an hour and a half in the, around the table because she's in that phase where she's like, Dad, I'm bored. 
Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. Uh, so I'm just trying to keep up with that. that you I'm you should look for uh, uh, the junior version of Ticket to Ride. Uh, okay. Because it's a it's a great one that basically works on strategy, um, and they're like this that one I believe is uh, trains across the U.S. and so you get a lot of different cities to see and things like that, um, and they have different like pictures that collate like kind of what's going on in that city and stuff. But my kids love it, and uh, they always ask to play it, and it's just a lot of fun. It's actually it's one of those games that you know, as an adult, you can sit down and enjoy playing it as well. And they get to just experience like strategy and competition all at the same time. So it's, yeah, that's a good one. to try This is the great things about talking to other dads. I feel like when I talk to another dad, I, it, it just adds to, to my life, to, to my, I, you know, I always have this, this theory that fatherhood is like a toolbox and you gain tools from some people that you meet throughout your life and you don't have to use them immediately, but you can put them in your toolbox. And when the right moment comes out, you can have that tool ready to go. And, and that's how I felt like ever since I joined the organization. So, so all those dads listening out there, this is, you know, an amazing resource. And this is just a podcast when you're like, you know, together with hundreds of members, that's, mm. that's yeah. really like an enriching experience. I met uh, some people from, you know, from places I've, I would never visit. And now it's like, and if I visit this city, I'm going to call this dad and we're going to yeah. go have a cigar and we just, you know, just hang out for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's the one thing that is uh truly great. I, I told my wife, I was like, man, if my kids decide to go, if our kids decide to go anywhere in the country, like I'm pretty sure there's going to be somebody dad wise that I know that lives nearby. Like if I can't get to them for whatever reason, like someone else can to help them out. So I completely agree with that, but man, dude, I honestly, I feel like we could talk to you for, <laughs> for another hour. Sergio's the man. I, I, I've been saying this <laughs> since before he started the board. In fact, Sergio's the man. It just is because you can't stop talking to him. You Definitely. know, you know, Danny, I, a lot of people ask me, how do you do so many things? I'm, I'm, I'm also a uh, certified cigar sommelier. I got my, my diploma mm -hmm. recently, which I'm and, jealous um, of. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the funny thing is that I say to people, the, when I get older, I want to be able to enjoy life. I, and, and since I'm a young dad, uh, I will, I have the energy. So let's do as much as we can and prepare for the future. You never know when, when mm -hmm. I moved to, to Virginia, 2013 i i came here for a government job they moved me pay my expenses and it was there was a government shutdown and guess what happened i didn't get the nomination until like four months first job was somebody called me and say hey i got this gig with this band are you able to come to rehearsal and play and i was like <laughs> Thank God I need it. I needed to do mm -hmm. something. And, uh, and that was like the beginning of doing many things. So music took me there. And then I went to Trader Joe's and I was like, Hey, I need a job. So they took me in and I was the wine guy. So they paid for my WSET license and I learned about wine. I was cool. certified wow. and I was like, that's another resource. And I feel like yeah. life has so many different things and resources that you can tap into yep. and in your time off or when your kids are sleeping and you can just, you know, nowadays it's, they say it takes 5,000 hours to become an expert or 10,000 hours. So even you think about, you know, hey, you can be consuming this much content or reading this much pages and just in a year and then, you know, two years, three years, five years go by so quick. Um, you can be an expert wherever you want to be an expert nowadays. We have the information in our hands. So my goal is to have as much knowledge as as possible so when the right situation comes or the wrong situation arises i can have something to tackle that situation and and to be honest it's like i'm going back to school this year people are like why are you doing that and i was like you know what um i'm a military spouse we might be moving somewhere around the world that i might not have a, a steady job but i can definitely defend myself with the right skills yeah mm -hmm. I love every bit of what you just said. And honestly, like, I hope that anybody who's, you know, feeling like they maybe can't move in a certain direction that 
that that inspires them to to push them towards that thing that they're like i don't know if i can do this and honestly like taking the time to grind it out and the the, the ability to gain uh knowledge and resources and skills like it it will it pays off it it really does and you just have to grind it out to do it and so i really appreciate you saying that um and i really appreciate you coming on the show with us man like it's uh it's great to uh get to spend time catching up i'm looking forward to uh catching up more in uh in milwaukee at the at the board retreat i know it's a lot of business but it's always good uh, camaraderie to get around uh all the board members and such and uh honestly like i i'm excited to see what's going to happen uh just with the organization, with what you're going to be uh, involved in with uh, JDEI and uh, helping out with uh, social media stuff. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, man, I'm just, it, it's just always so exciting to talk to you. And uh, like, I'm, I guess my other thing is I'm really looking forward to sharing a cigar with you and Danny <laughs> yes. when we get up to Milwaukee. So definitely going to yeah. be uh, doing that. I don't, care. I don't care how cold it, it is. Oh, it's you know, March. I'm going to have my, 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 my caddy with me. And I'm going to bring some good stuff. But I wanted to tell the dads. So home.com, September 20, uh, 22nd, September 23rd. I am going to try and do a cigar night. Okay. Yes. I'm already looking for a couple of lounges and see, you know, which one has the best seating options to get a couple of dads there. Uh, we did one in Cincinnati. Uh, and, uh, and I, there were a couple of us there hanging out and it was super cool. That's how I got to connect a little bit more deeper with some dads. Um, and, uh, I feel like, Hey, let's do that for those dads who, you know, are looking to do something like late night, uh, or, or yes. sometimes they just can't get past the excitement and you go to, and you go to your room <laughs> and you can't sleep. Yep. So it's <laughs> a great way to relax. I'll, I'll send out more details later on. Uh, but uh yeah i'm definitely planning something and we'll see how that goes oh man that's cool. awesome man love it all right well hey we will uh talk to you all next week and uh until then man just everybody have a great week and uh yeah peace out good night everybody i'm a dad that's what i do